What is going on guys, Shrey here from Shrey's Tech Tips and today I'll be doing a video on the history of nanotechnology. This is much more different than what I usually do, but this is a class project so I'm just going to be publishing it on YouTube so that my teacher can view it. And if you want to watch it, go ahead and watch it, it's pretty interesting. And if you don't want to watch it, then you can just close the tab. But anyways, if you're watching, enjoy! <laughs> Nanotechnology is a new and emerging field of technology that deals with dimensions less than 100 nanometers. And if you put that in perspective, 100,000 nanometers fit into the thickness of a piece of paper. When Physics Nobel Prize winner Richard P. Feynman was at a dinner with his peers in 1959, he challenged them to write the entire 24 volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica on the head of a pin. He wondered that if our cells could produce at such a small level, why couldn't we produce at a similar or even atomic level? He was sure guessing the future, and in time, computers that took up whole rooms occupied our pockets. This led to the coinage of the term nanotechnology in 1974 by a Tokyo Science University professor, Norio Tanaguchi. In 1981, two IBM Zurich Research Laboratory employees, Gerd Binning and Heinrich Rohr, earned the Nobel Prize in Physics for inventing the scanning tunneling microscope. This microscope allowed for imaging at the atomic level in a vacuum, along with air, water, and other materials, withstanding temperatures from 0 to over 370 Kelvin. This would eventually lead to some pretty cool things. In 1989, IBM spelled the three letters in their logo, I, B, and M, using only 35 atoms of xenon, a nickel plate, and the scanning tunneling microscope. IBM used to be the biggest player in the computer industry, and now their stock share has decreased quite a lot since their peak. They also published a cute little movie in 2013 on the Adam and the boy. Enjoy! In 1991, Sumio Ijima, a Japanese scientist, developed the carbon nanotube. This allotrope of carbon exhibits very unique properties to other carbon materials. It takes the shape of a cylinder and has extraordinary strength and unique electric properties, causing it to store lots of power. The most amazing thing is that these cylinders are only one nanometer in diameter and can be several millimeters tall because of their rigid structure. I want a carbon nanotube battery to come in the future. This would allow for our batteries to run for several days to weeks at a time. It would be pretty cool to charge your phone for a few minutes and then to run it for a couple of days. It would make phones thinner, lighter, and less prone to exploding. <coughs> <coughs> They would very nicely complement some of the new foldable displays and the flexible PCBs that are being released nowadays. I hope you liked this video on the history of nanotechnology. This was Shrey's Tech Tips. Have a great day!